What's up everybody, it's the Sports Kid aka Aiden and welcome back to another video, Manchester United draw nil nil two Wolves in a very frustrating game, a very, a very, very, very bad game as well. Uh, this is going to be a very sad player review. Now I know uh, Wolves are not a very uh, good team offensively, they definitely use the counter attack a lot, but um their five at the back really got us today and just another example of Man United not be able to break down teams. I think the tactics were extremely wrong today as well. And I, I just think that there could have been more done in order to get this win and unfortunately we didn't and we're now falling further away from uh, Chelsea and the top four position. This was a chance. This was the biggest chance since Chelsea drew to get closer to them and to get... Um, to get into a top four fight with them, especially when we have them next after the break. But unfortunately, um, Wolves were just a tough team and they, they gritted and grinded to get a draw. And that's uh, all I can really say about it. I said in my match preview, this was definitely going to be a draw in my opinion. I, didn't, I never saw us losing this game, but it's probably it was definitely going to be a draw. And Wolves, they're just not a team that you like to verse. They're not a team that's entertaining to watch, and they're not a team that gets the best out of Man United. So, um, yeah, look, we've had a good track record against Wolves this season, but a draw it was not good enough today. And the players, it might not be necessarily their fault, but there is uh, their faults as well. There's, it's a mix between the tactics. Wolves extremely, extremely uh, parking the bus defense and... Um, and the players and all his tactics and everything, man. There's a lot that went wrong today. But um, Bruno Fernandes also made his debut today. I'll get to how he did later on. But, yeah, I just don't understand how we let this one slip. We really we had a very good opportunity at the end of the game to, uh, to seal it. Mason Greenwood had a good impact as well. Uh, I don't know, man. This is just very difficult to swallow, really, because... Chelsea now becomes the biggest game of our season, really does. If we're looking for a top four fight, we have to win against Chelsea. There's no other option here. If Chelsea beat us, that top four is honestly gone because I don't see us, uh, it's already, what, a seven-point gap? I don't see us uh, getting a, coming back from double digits if Chelsea beat us. And a draw is not going to be good enough either because we're going to start, be stuck with seven, which is extremely difficult with um, Europa League as well. We're going to have a very tough time to do both. So I think either we go for top four, we go for the Europa League. I think it's becoming to that stage. We can't do both anymore. And whatever gets us the Champions League football, honestly, I'll, I'll do. If we have to sacrifice top four for the Europa League, then do it. If we have to sacrifice Europa League for top four, then do it. It doesn't matter to me as long as the Champions League is... Um, is is in our future next season. It, it's definitely the way to go. It's definitely a way to bring um, more investment into the team and more attractive um, proposition for players. Everything. Champions League must be um, in our futures next season. We'll get to the player reviews. Uh, but yes, Champions League needs to be in, in our... Um, in our future, it has to be. It is a must. And if it doesn't, I'm not sure what's going to happen when it comes to investment in the summer. It looks like there's going to be little to nothing already, but now it's going to be pretty much even less of a of a summer transfer window that we're going to have. So we'll start off with um, David De Gea. I think David De Gea gets a seven from me. Uh, he didn't do anything wrong. He didn't get tactically... Uh, not tactically, he didn't have much to do, but he made very important saves. Not as many as the Man City game, because obviously Wolves didn't attack us a lot. But um, he definitely made some good saves today. He kept us in a, he kept us to a draw. He uh, played fantastic, one on one against Raúl Jiménez. By the way, what I want to say is, Man United, if you're looking for a striker that's going to break their nose for uh, for their team. Go and get Raul Jimenez, man. Go and get him as a permanent player because I'm telling you, he worked his ass off today against two center backs that played pretty decent. He kept in quite all night, but he managed to find a way to find shots after shot. He did wonders for Wolves today. And I think if Wolves didn't have him, um, it would be parking the bus for 90 minutes and there would be no shots for Wolves. And I think that's all good to do with him and Adam Traore, which we'll get to later on. So, yeah, if you're looking for a striker, go and get him, man. It's it's That's the way to go, in my opinion. Um, anyway, 
So going back to David De Gea, perf I think he had a perfect performance, really. I, I can't give him more than a seven because he didn't have many saves, but the ones that he, that he had to save, he did, and he did it well. So good job for David De Gea. Another solid game, world-class, fantastic. Uh, Wan-Bissaka also gets a seven. Uh, I, I actually wanted to give him an eight, but I just feel like um, there was uh, there's another player that that probably played a bit better than him, and I want to give him recognition a little bit more. So I might just switch that to a seven and a half. wan -Bissaka was defensively perfect today. Again, you expect this from wan -Bissaka. Even offensively, he had... He could have got an assist or two today. He really did, man. Those crosses, they were in dangerous positions. And Delo missed a very easy opportunity. Maybe the pressure got to him, and as well as the defender, um, maybe putting him off a bit. And I don't really blame Delo for the miss, by the way. It's just... Um, that's, that's a substitute who's not even an attacker playing an attacking position. So, yeah, it, it, look, he should score it, but at the end of the day, it can't all be on his shoulders as well. That We should have created many more opportunities to put this game to bed way, way earlier. So, yes, um, Wambasaka, he could have got a few assists today. I thought he was amazing. Um, definitely, you could say he was uh, uh, one of the candidates for man of the match. And... What can I say, man? He played a really good game today. And this is, is this is known for wan -Bissaka. I hope he can get a rest here or there, especially in the Europa League or something like that. Give him a break because if we overuse him, we cannot lose wan -Bissaka. Defensively, we cannot lose him. Our defense will get exposed if wan -Bissaka doesn't play. And we've already seen a, a little bit um, when he got injured earlier in the season. So we cannot risk him getting injured again. Um, Lindelof gets a six. I think Lindelof was pretty good today. He was average. Uh, didn't do, didn't really put a foot wrong. A uh, couple of fouls here and there. Um, he was good passing the ball. I just feel like because Wolves really only got us on the counter attack, I don't think our centre backs really had much to do at all. Um, so Lindelof, yeah, he just had an average performance. A good day for him. Uh, I guess you could say it's it's just. Um, yeah, man, it's, it's not really much to say about Lindelof today. He, was, he, he just had a normal performance. I think Harry Maguire played slightly better than Lindelof, but I wouldn't put him uh, anywhere near man of the match for Harry Maguire. He made a very important interception. Harry Maguire will probably get a seven from me. He played better than Lindelof, but I wouldn't say by much. So I'm, I don't want to go, go in on Lindelof because I think both centre-backs had a decent performance. Uh, Harry Maguire, you know what to get from Harry Maguire. He won, he he wins his headers. I thought he would get exposed when Chiara is on his side, but he did fairly, fairly well to stop him. And um, yeah, look, it was a good performance from both of them. Captain, again, he had a good performance. I think he's building into that. He's really building into our captain. I just wish that um, he could have scored a header today. He almost, uh, he almost got a goal, I guess you could say. He got, got a good cutback that uh, just slightly... Slightly missed, I guess. I'm not sure really what happened with that one. If anybody saw that, that was pretty weird to me. I thought the keeper may have touched him, but oh well. It's a uh, discussion to be had for another day. And uh, Luke Shaw. I think Luke Shaw was man of the match today. Now, I know he didn't get uh, many crosses in as much as Wambasaka, and I know he wasn't attacking-wise um, uh, the best player on the pitch, but you got to understand that Luke Shaw had to deal with Adam Traore the whole game. And this Adam Traore, you're looking for a winger, Man United. There's one right there. One that can definitely, definitely suit our team, bro. Get, go get Adam Traore if you're looking for a white, right winger and you can't get a, like the likes of Sancho or anything like that. He was a monster. The entire game, he was a monster. And Luke Shaw, he kept that monster tamed. He calmed him down. He defended extremely well against, a, I would say, a world-class um, player, especially with his pace. His delivery is pretty good, Traore, as well, especially in this game. Usually, that's not something I would say about him, but um, his delivery was pretty good, and Luke Shaw kept him quiet a lot of the time. you got to give Luke Shaw his praise. That left-back position, I'm extremely happy with the competition going on between those two, Brandon Williams and Luke Shaw, because I think it's bringing the best out of both of them. Congratulations. Luke Shaw, man of the match for me. He gets an eight. That was amazing performance from him he kept um he kept Adam Troy quiet for the majority of the game uh, he defended very well he got forward he even got a really close assist from Bruno to Bruno Fernandez and um this is what we need from Luke Shaw and this is what we need from Brandon Williams this competition 
is crucial for that left back position. I wish every position had um, as much competition as that left back position at the moment, because those two are really fighting to try and get that first place, first um, that that starting spot at left back, and that's that's all we can ask for. They're trying their best and they're performing, man. That's fantastic to see. So congratulations for Luke Shaw for being my man of the match. Um, going into the CDMs now. We'll start off with Fred. I think Fred was a very good performer today. He gets a seven. Uh, I think Fred, um, he, he played pretty decent. Uh, he defended well. I think he got tripped up a few times, ankle broken. Uh, if you're looking at basketball terms, just um, he got done a few times, I guess. But uh, what I want to see from Fred, I want to see some more attacking um, passes, man. I, he, he passes a lot. But he doesn't seem to pass to areas where he where it could make an impact. That's the next step for Fred. I think Fred has that in his locker. There's no doubt about it in my mind that Fred has it in his locker to make a forward pass that can be lethal. And um, I just want to see more from Fred when it comes to offensively. Defensively, he's sound. In passing, he's sound. He makes the correct passes when he needs to. But there's, uh, I, I want to see more risk from Fred. And I know it's frustrating where, when a risk doesn't pay off. But at the same, this is the main reason that we drew the game today. We didn't, make, we didn't get risky at all. No risk whatsoever. And I think Fred gets a seven. Now we'll go to Bruno Fernandes. And I really feel sorry for Bruno Fernandes today because he got stuck playing a CDM position that we should have never let happen. I said this in the preview. Bruno Fernandes is wasted as a CDM, and I was proven right. He's not a good CDM in my opinion. He got um, done very easily when it comes to actually defending. He got a yellow card, but his passing and his offense was fine. It was fine. It was normal. It, he had a few turnovers, but he was the only one trying to create something as a midfielder. Long balls, um, passes that got deflected. I don't mind these things, especially when Wolves are playing a back five. What you need to understand is it's extremely hard to break Wolves down because what we do to Man City is what Wolves are doing to us. And we are not Man City. So we're going to be, it's going to be extremely, extremely hard to try and break down Wolves because it's not going to be possible. It really would not be possible. And I think Bruno Fernandes was just trying to create something out of nothing and it ended up backfiring. And now there's people on Twitter, there's people on social media that are roasting him in his first game, which in my opinion is unacceptable because. It's his first game. He's only been in England for bloody two days, 48 hours, and um, he's been put into the fire, and we wanted him to be put in that fire, and I think he handled himself very well for his first game. He's not in the right position, and um, he got exposed for that, so I think he will probably get us. I'm going to give him a seven as well, just for his offense alone, and the couple of shots that he had, the free kick as well was pretty, it was a very good free kick. Um, unfortunately, it was saved. He had some uh, good opportunities to make an impact today. And it's unfortunate that he was put in as a CDM. Maybe this is why Scott McTominay and Pogba need to come back because Andres Pereira was not good enough today to be a CDM. We'll get to Andres Pereira. Andres Pereira, in my opinion, was the second worst player on the pitch. And I'm going to give him a four. I'm sorry, but... um. He got moved. This is Oli's fault as well. I'm going to say this. Andreas Pereira's performance was mainly on Oli. Um, Andreas Pereira played three different positions today. He started off as the CDM. Then he played as the cam. And then he played as the left winger. Now, I don't know what in Oli's bright mind would think that moving him to the wing was a good idea or playing him as a CDM to begin with was a good idea. If you're looking for a natural CDM, play James Garner. Really play James Garner because Andreas is not good enough to be a CDM. It should have never happened in the first place. Then you have to move him to Cam and bring out the Cam that everybody wanted to see to CDM. And it still didn't work out. Andreas didn't perform at Cam and Bruno didn't perform at CDM. So you pulled him out to the left wing and you pulled Matt at Cam. Matt is a good Cam and he played good when he was at Cam. But Andreas was not a good left winger. He, did, he was non-existent as a left winger. He had one shot. One shot on target. I feel sorry for Andreas, but I just don't think he's um, performing. I think maybe we should uh, bench him into a Europa League game when we're versing an inferior competition. 
anything like that, or the FA Cup. I just don't think Andreas is good enough to be starting anymore. And with McTominay coming back, hopefully for Chelsea, and same with Paul Pogba, I think Andreas is the one that has to leave the team. And it's sad, because I'm a big fan of Andreas. I think everybody this season, last season, we were all wanting him to play because we needed somebody. We were having the same conversations last year as we have this year. We need a cam. Andreas is the best cam. But... I, over the year, he's shown that he's not been a good cam. So that's why Bruno's come in. And hopefully in a year's time, we're not saying this about Bruno, but it is it's it is a possibility and we need to give Bruno his time and I'm going to give him his time. And I think today was not a good example of how good Bruno could be. And it's also a pretty good example of Andreas just not being good enough at the time. I think four is a fair score for him. Um... Yeah, okay, so we got Juan Mata as well on the right wing at the start, then he moved to Cam. Uh, Mata played pretty well today, in my opinion. I think he's going to get a six for the link-up play alone. Mata's not a fast player, and by all means, please, Oli, never play him right wing. Don't even entertain the idea of playing right wing. Go and play Chong if you want a right winger. Go and play Daniel James or Mason Greenwood. Go and play Juan Mata is not a right winger. His pace is uh, worse than, he has the slowest, he's probably the slowest player on the team today. It's unacceptable that he's being even being considered to be a winger. I'm sorry, if we're looking to play counter-attacking football, which is what you say or claim that we are doing, you don't play one Mata at um, a winger. No way, not going to happen. I'm sorry, it's not good enough. But Mata, he played well today. He got his link-up plays. He got his, um, he created a lot of opportunities Good opportunities as well. I think six is a fair score because everybody in attacking um, positions played awful today, in my opinion. I think Wamata was the best of the bunch. But um, winger, absolutely not. Don't even entertain that idea, please. Okay, we'll go to Daniel James. I think Daniel James was probably tied with Andreas with the worst player on the pitch today. I think, uh, I think Daniel James has been used way too much. I don't think he's very confident at the moment. And I love Daniel James. Uh, I know he tries a lot, but um, he just didn't create anything. He was almost invisible. He was almost like we're playing with 10 men. Playing five at the back really hurt Daniel James as well because any cross to the box, it just was non-existent because it just it just got hit away. We only have one player in the box. I think tactically was really bad today. I think we should have... Um, it's tough to be, it's tough to beat wolves because no matter what you change, wolves will adapt. So it's it's it is tough. And Daniel James, I'm sure if it was any other team, he might have had it a little bit better. Or a, but it's just um, it wasn't good enough from Daniel James today. I think four and Martial also gets a four because I love Martial, but I just think he's not concentrating in the game. He works hard. Martial, I will debate this with anybody. Martial works hard. He works hard and he tries to win the ball back when he loses it. But he loses it way too often and I feel like his concentration levels are not there offensively. And maybe drifting into positions where he shouldn't need to be drifting into. As well as uh, turning the ball over a little bit too easy. Passes going misplaced. I think that's, that's Martial's issue at the moment. I really think Martial misses Rashford as well. We need pace to open up a defense and I th really think we're having that's lacking it really is lacking if we had Rashford you'd see a better Martial we also had Bruno at Cam you might have seen an opportunity from Martial Martial didn't create anything today and I think four is a pretty good score for Martial and I'm sorry that um I'm sorry that I had to say that but like it's it I can't hide I love Martial but I can't hide the fact that he's been playing pretty poorly for the last couple of weeks but I, I will debate it with anybody. He works harder than ever. And strikers have, do have bad um, strokes of form. And I'm very confident he can turn it around. Hopefully sooner than later. Because we really need him. Um, uh, the, lone the lone striker, Igalo, I'm pretty sure that's his name. He didn't even um, make the bench. I'm pretty sure it's because he's not actually officially signed. Of course, We've signed him, obviously, but like the medical maybe, as well as him arriving in Manchester. Apparently, that hasn't happened yet either. So we'll see what happens with that. Maybe he can help uh, release Martial as well. well. Anything can happen, man. Uh, we just need a really pacey player that can just break down a defence. Um... We'll go to the substitutions. So the first substitution was Mason Greenwood for Daniel James. 
I think Mason Greenwood gets a six. I don't think he did anything wrong. He didn't have much of an Im He had 20 minutes to make an impact. Got a couple of shots off. One that was deflected and could have went in. Unfortunately, uh, that keeper, was that was probably one of the best save of the night, really, because he saw it very late. Um, and Greenwood, he had the probably the best opportunity for Man United. Besides, Diogo Delo, um, he gets a six as well. He Like I said... He didn't have much time to make an impact, but he had the best chance of the game, man, and he should have put it away. Unfortunately, it didn't happen for him. I think average is what he was today. And, yep, and same with Lingard. Lingard didn't have anything to do, so six. Um, Lingard really, I didn't see him touch the ball for the last whatever couple minutes that he was on. And, yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, also, the walkout. Apparently, the walkout got changed to the 68th minute which I 100% agree with and I applaud for um, for whoever decided to change it or if it even, um, if it did happen, because I didn't really see it happen, but uh, if it did happen and it did happen on the 68th minute, I applaud that. I respect that a lot, that you were able to change your mind and go on the 68th minute instead of the 58th minute because respecting the... For me, personally, respecting the incident that happened in Munich and all those players... And um, even more, not just players that, that passed away in that terrible accident for our club. I think the I think it was the last thing to do, in my opinion, is to walk out on them after the 58th minute. I don't think that was very smart. I, I, I personally don't think it's respectful. But I know that other people find it maybe respectful in a way because... The Glazers are killing us. If if the, and I understand that, and I'm not going to say that their way is wrong, but it's just not my style personally. So if it got changed, I'm very happy about that. Um, but I didn't see anybody leave, and I don't know if anything left. Definitely wasn't shown on TV in Australia, so I'm not sure. The only thing I saw was Ed Woodward wasn't at the game, and I don't. Uh, that's the only thing I saw. So I don't really know what happened with the walkout. I'm sure we'll learn more over the coming hours of how many people left and um, if it really made an impact. Uh, we'll see what happens when it, when it comes to Twitter, what's trending. Um, I, I'm sure there'll be videos about it. So yeah, we'll see what happens. I didn't turn off my game at the 68th minute. I'm not, I'm not really a massive... Uh, fan of the of the walkout because I don't feel like it's going to do anything in my opinion. I really don't. I think there needs to be multiple walkouts and that will make an impact because one game walkout and then the next game no one leaves. That's, uh, in my opinion, less of a statement than constantly walking out. But um, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Like Maybe people, someone will see this video and take that idea. I think that's a better idea than just doing it for one game in my opinion. And that's it. For for Ollie's um, actual performance today, I think the lineup was poor. I, I really do. I think um, the tactics was poor as well. So I think Ollie gets to like a four for his uh, lineup and tactics. And the player performance gets just as bad for... Um, I, think our, I think Wolves were the better team in my opinion. Th th looking back at it, Wolves were a better team than us today. And Old Trafford, seriously, we do not perform at Old Trafford. And uh, maybe, I don't know why. I don't know why we don't perform at Old Trafford. We're away, we seem to be much better. Nevertheless, the next game is going to be in two weeks, I believe, against uh, Chelsea. Very big game. Game of the season, in my opinion. Uh, I'm going to be very looking very closely to this one. I've got a couple of friends that are Chelsea fans. And um, we're, we're obviously going to have to debate and see what happens when it comes to... Who's going to win the game? Because uh, I couldn't tell you, to be honest. I couldn't tell you. I think both teams are relatively out of form. Um, but one's above the other. So I guess they're going to be the favourites. It's also at Chelsea's home. We'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, that's the end of the video. Uh, please like and subscribe. This is the Sports Code. Take care. Peace.